so the first step is just getting an Excel file organized. Um, and part of that is going to be thinking about like, okay, well, what's the purpose of my code? What am I going to be doing? And this particular one, I have the columns represent the different pieces of data that I'm going to include. Um, I could keep adding more columns. So I could say like how many yards they received, how many catches, how many targets. Like I could start adding more and more columns of data that I want to incorporate. Um, I personally like including a title in my Excel file so I know what each of those columns are. It helps me keep track of it. And then under that, I would have all my data and my information. So going down, you'll notice like these are all different football players' names. That's what's going there. These are all different teams, um, positions, and so on. So I have all this data. So if I go across, like that's all about this one player and it's matching the columns I have above. And then again, within that same column, all of the type of data I'm showing there is matching. So from here, the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna import my data in. There's a few different functions for this. The function that I recommend is read cell. Uh, the reason is it works on, one of the reasons is it works on both Macs and PCs. So there is another older version of the function, but again, I'm going to tell you to stick with read cells, the best one to make sure you read it correctly. Um, from here, you just run right away. So if we look, I didn't suppress this, so it shows up in my command window and we see exactly what Excel looks like. It looks like here. So if I have like my titles, for instance, are on my first row in all the columns. So I can slice that out. Keep in mind, remember, that doesn't change my original data. It just slices out the titles and stores it to another variable, which I called title. Um, there's a couple approaches. I could then from here, if I wanted to, I could say I want to delete the whole first row. That way I don't have the titles on my data. So here now I have the title here and I have it deleted out here. I can do that or I could also use slicing again. I'm gonna leave this as different. So they're already stored in as numbers. So you can see here, if they have the brackets like that, that means they're numbers. If they have the apostrophes like that, that means they're strings. Um, but I cannot, so if I say one number, for instance, let's grab out a data, if I'm on my first row, fourth column, that's a number. So we see that it's a number here, but it's called a cell array is what it says. So I can't take this number and multiply it. It gave me this error because it's not working for a cell. So there's a few ways to handle this. Um, instead of slicing with parentheses, I slice with braces and then that slices that number out. Another, if, but I can only do that for one piece of data at a time. And at most of the time, I imagine you're gonna want like the whole list of numbers in a vector probably. So let's do um, rankings was my first, is that fourth column. So I'm gonna do my rankings here. I'm gonna first slice them all out. Again, all of them, all rows, fourth column. So we see again, it's a cell array all sliced out. So a function that's really useful is cell to mat. And this converts, it gets rid of that cell array around it. So when I bring the data in, it's all like it's either a double inside of a box or it's a string like character array inside of a box. So if you want to know the types of positions, so the positions are in this third column here. And in this list, I have a bunch of different positions and some of them are repeating. So if I wanted to ask the user which position they're interested in, I wouldn't want to put this whole list because, again, some of those are repeating. I wouldn't want to say quarterback or wide receiver, or wide receiver, or wide receiver, or running back. You know, like, I, that would be annoying. So instead, I can use this function that's kind of handy, and it's called, well, let me slice it first. So again, first, I'm going to slice all the positions. So I want to slice out of data all the rows in the third column. And again, these are just the same slicing things that we've already gone over. Now, if I want a list of positions, I can use this function called unique. 
And this function will identify So see here, now it tells me all the positions available. Um, because we are just sticking with numbers still, I'm gonna show you a way that like kind of a workaround so that way you don't have to ask the user for strings and we can just work with asking users for numbers still and it will all work. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to do Remember, we have the size function will report the number of rows or columns. If I say comma one, that's going to tell me the number of rows. So let's say I want to tell my user something like select. I know fprintf isn't an input, so sometimes again we use fprintf as like a workaround to show what we want to say. Right now I'm just coding a, putting together information, like trying to display to the user their different options. Um, so the list positions is what I want to slice out of. Right now I'm going to show you an error just for the purpose of seeing that it's a problem. So if I slice out with those parentheses and I'm slicing one at a time, it slices the position, but it puts it, it's the cell still. So again, this is one of the tricky things. If you're getting into cell arrays, you're gonna have to use things like cell to mat or different functions to convert your data, or you have to make sure to slice out of the box, not just slice. So the reason I use the parentheses or like the braces instead of parentheses is this is just specific to cell arrays. If I use parentheses, it slices, again, it grabs the whole container. So basically I'm taking the container and the content of the container, but fprintf doesn't work well. Like fprintf can't operate with the container itself. So for most of the functions you're gonna use or any kind of math, you can't use like that contained string. You have to use the string. So you have to open the box. So basically think of like the braces when we get into creating cell arrays, we use braces to create them instead of brackets. And then we also use braces to open them and like get rid of them. So you see how like here, when I use the parentheses and I look on my workspace, like in my command window, see how it shows a one by set one cell array when I use the parentheses versus it shows the string itself here. You can actually just do char does the same thing. So input is gonna equal three. And if I want to refer back, so now let's say I want to look for um, that, I want that position and I want to grab all that data related to that position. So the selected position would then be list positions because I picked the number based on that list and it would be the third row, first column. There's only one column, so I don't really need to put that, but so. Sorry, I just hard coded that in. That's really bad, don't do that. <laughs> Input. <laughs> so I picked four for tight end, and then it selected position aligns. And again, if I want that as a string, I'll use char instead. And something I can do with this is I can now identify all of those within my data set. I want to see in my original data, um, so remember positions is gonna be this this is my list from the original Excel file. So all of these are still corresponding with their original row. If I wanted to look in that original list and see which ones are equal to that selected position, this is gonna tell me true or false. What did I pick? 
tight end. So I guess I only have one tight end on my list. So I, since I only have one, there's only one true. These true or falses, this is gonna be a little bit different um, and kind of weird. But where it's true, I can tell it to grab all the rows that are true by simply saying data that long variable, grab all the columns. So let's say I say quarterback. Now I've grabbed all of that data out. So at least know how you can access your numeric data. Remember again, you can do anything with those numbers that you would like once you have them. You can display information to your user based on your Excel file. You can sort your Excel file information. Um, all of the slicing, augmenting, all of diminution, all of that still applies. Again, every once in a while, there's gonna be this weird difference, but to avoid this, just remember using the cell to mat or char functions when needed.